A number of groups of people, including some higher ups at NHTSA, have talked about how Teslas, and particularly Tesla full self-driving, has killed a whole bunch of people. Well, I've got an example of just the opposite. Let's take a look. For those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $2,300. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So first of all, I want to just kind of quickly say that I've tried to uh, redo my setup a little bit when I use my computer to make the visuals look a lot better. I think this is a substantially better situation. And so anyway, let me know in the comments if you think this is better. I've, I've actually used my old Lumix camera with a Leica lens instead of a USB camera. So anyway, hopefully it looks substantially better than it did before. Um, let me know what you think. <laughs> I'm always trying to improve things. Anyway, on to the serious matter. I had a viewer who wrote me last night, Michael Young, and he's graciously allowed me to use the footage and also some information about the specific circumstances of the almost accident that happened. And I also wanna say right from the get-go that I am doing the best I can to be as scientific as I can about this, to examine the details very, very closely, but obviously I was not there. I can't prove all of this stuff. And of course, this is not a statistic. This is just a single incident of something. But as the quote says, a a single death is a tragedy, a million deaths is a statistic. So I think it's important for us to look at how full self-driving actually operated in a condition where an accident was imminent. It would have happened if full self-driving had not taken action in under a second to prevent the accident. All right, first, a few details about setting up the scene for all of this stuff. I've got it on a lovely post-it note here. That's <laughs> what I tend to use. I have post-it notes everywhere. Anyway, so Michael Young, as I said, was driving the car with his daughter. It's a 2018 Model 3 Long Range, driving full self-driving beta 10.8. They're in Odington, Maryland. And this happened somewhere around 6 p.m., he said, after picking up dinner and coming home. His daughter was in the front passenger seat, which would be on the right in the United States. And of course, he was on the front left as the driver of the car. So again, Michael was using full self-driving 10.8 beta to drive the car. It was in control of the car at the time. You'll see when the light changes, it's a little bit blurry, but you can see there's a left turn arrow. So he has the right of way, obviously, and it's uh, several seconds after the light changes and the car begins to proceed out into the intersection that the other car just blows through a red light. And without some evasive maneuvers that we'll look at more closely frame by frame, the car would have been hit at least on the front, if not T-boned, you know, directly into the side into where the driver of the car was, which would have been very, very tragic. You know, no matter what, it would have destroyed property, but at, it also could have resulted in injuries or even death. So without further ado, I want to let you watch the entire video first. It's about 31 seconds long. If you're like me, your heart will fall into your stomach when you see what happens. It's really, really boring, and then it gets really exciting for about two seconds, and then it goes back to being really boring again. So you can see he's waiting at a light and it's just about to change to green and it will have a, a arrow indicating that Michael can go and he has the right of way. So a couple of seconds delay and then, wow. And then the best indication that it was driving full self-driving beta and the car was driving was that the car just proceeds right on right there. It's just like, yep, no big deal. It just goes on. If I was a human being in that situation and I'd come that close, I would have sat in that intersection for a little while kind of regaining my breath. All right, so let's break this scene down a little bit here. So just to run through this again, we can kind of scroll through and you can see the light changes. And yeah, you can barely see, but it does have, there's a left turn arrow up there. So it's going, the car proceeds out and then the car goes past it, okay? Now I've taken a couple of, you know, just this is, Again, understand this is very rough measurements. I don't have exact measurements, but we can make some approximations here. So a, a normal car, so you can see when this car actually gets into the intersection, it's either some sort of hatchback or sedan type of car. An average hatchback slash sedan type of car is around four meters long. And you can see that the car is basically, you know, it, it's a little bit less than the field of view that goes by. So. At a conservative you know, rating, I'm going to say that the, 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 the distance from here to here on the screen is approximately five meters. It may be a little bit longer than that. It may be five and a half or so or six. 
uh, because there's a lot of motion blur in here too. But anyway, I'm going to be conservative, and the reason why I'm going to say it's only five meters is because if I said it was six meters, it would actually make the car go even faster. But I want to give kind of a sense of how fast the car is going here. So let's go back, and then if I go through frame at a time, this is 30 frames per second, by the way, uh, Tesla full self-driving video. So you can see the car comes in. We've got frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And eight is when it crosses this. So again, it's probably a little conservative, but we can say it takes eight frames to go five meters for the car to go five meters. And again, <laughs> some calculations, post-it note, it, that would be 0 0.27 seconds at 30 frames per second. And what that gives you is 18.5 meters per second that the car is traveling at this point. And if you convert that to kilometers per hour, that's 67. Or if you convert it to miles per hour, it's 42 miles per hour. So again, really, really rough measurements, but you could probably say this car was traveling somewhere between 40 and 50 miles per hour. Very, very fast. Obviously, if there was a collision, this would have caused severe damage to either the front of the car. Obviously, to that, the whatever car this is, this white car, would have been very, very severely damaged. Um, the front of the Tesla would have been very damaged if it had been a front-end collision. I'm sure it would have totaled the car. And if it was to the point where Michael and his daughter had gotten to where the car actually collided with the, you know, the passenger compartment, like the, the front left door or something like that, it would have been very severe and would have caused injuries, if not death. So, and again, it's a Tesla, so it's very safe. So probably they would have been okay, but you got to remember that the person driving this car might have actually, who knows, if that person wasn't wearing a seatbelt or something, they could have died. So anyway, this could have been very, very tragic. And you might say like, well, the Tesla really did nothing, but that's why I want to kind of break this down. So let's go back. I want to go back to where it starts to move. So it takes just a little bit of a second after the, the light changes. And watch this. We're going to go, again, I'm going to play this through like just by pressing the frame forward button. But watch the car trajectory. It actually moves forward and begins to make a left turn. But then you see at the last second, it actually goes to the right. Like you can see where my mouse is. It's going to the right. And then it stops very abruptly, which you can see from the scene sort of shaking. You can see how the uh, how the car actually, you know, it it rocks like this. So it goes like boof, like that when it stops really fast. So anyway, watch this and we'll kind of rewind and go back and forth a few times. So it starts to move, making its turn, and then right around here, see how it moves to the right instead and stops really abruptly. And you could again see how the, the scenery actually goes like this. It goes bump, bump, like that as it moves back and forth. So again, it happens really, really fast, even at a slowed down frame rate. But I want to, I want to go through this very carefully because uh, Elon Musk has said that the control systems generally run about 10 hertz right now, and they're aiming to go to 100 hertz. And so this car, you know, in, in one tenth of a second, even at the current rating right now before it moves to the one one hundredth of a second, it's making decisions every tenth of a second about what to do next. And of course, it has cameras that are looking out to the left. Even though Michael only shared with me the front view, the side view would have shown this car coming up. Michael said he didn't see this car at all. So he said if he was driving, he would have just gone right into the intersection and, you know, what, what happened would have happened and it would have been terrible. So anyway, this thing, you know, obviously the light is green. He has the right of way. It would have been the other person's fault, but <laughs> in an accident, it really doesn't matter whose fault it is. It's, it's just a horrible, you know, problem if there's an accident, including potentially tragedy of injury and death. So anyway, let's watch through here again. So again, watch the trajectory. It starts to move and then it moves to the right and stops. And you can see that the scenery, you can see the lights in particular kind of bounce up and down. So again, we'll move it backwards so you can see it bouncing like that. And again, so again, trajectory is that the car is moving forward. And then at the last second, it moves to the right and stops very abruptly, which is the decision-making process that is happening on a sub-second level here. So moving forward, moving to the right, very quick stop, right? So it's obviously making an evasive maneuver by moving to the right instead of continuing on with the left-hand turn. And then, of course, if you watch this, then you go back and it stops for a second and you can see how the, the car is still rocking. And then it just proceeds on. And this is the part that just blows my mind. You know, you've got, again, a human being would just be like, holy, what just happened? And the car is like, yep, I'm good. And it just keeps on going. So just pretty cool how it works like that. But anyway, one more time. So again, watching this very slowly, 
You can see how it pulls to the right and stops, and you can see how the background kind of rocks up and down, and then it just con continues on. And I'm gonna play this through one more time at full speed just so you get a chance to watch it. And again, video never does justice to how terrifying something like this is. You know, if something like this happens, the video is like, oh yeah, okay, it was scary, but it's like, it can be utterly life-changingly scary. So, all right, so playing this forward again, and you see the light changes, the car begins to move forward, and moves to the right, and then bounces, right? and then continues on. So again, car moves forward, it's going in kind of a straight line, getting ready for the left turn, and then stops very, very quickly and continues. It's just like a fraction of a second that it waits. It's just like, yeah, we're good, so everything's fine. All right, so again, a huge thank you to Michael for sharing this with me and presenting it. He said that he has actually tweeted it out to Elon as well, but you know, Elon's a busy guy, so he doesn't see a lot of these. But anyway, I wanted to do this episode and I wanted to share this with all of you because I think that this is a good counterpoint and counterexample to people who say that full self-driving is potentially killing people, which again, the statistics do not agree with that. And again, this is only one case. This is not a statistic. And this is also, you know, the, the specific facts of this um, I've had second hand from him, of course, and I've just tried to do my best to figure out the actual speeds and things involved with this. But anyway, obviously I have no reason to distrust Michael's intent. He didn't ask me this. He just sent it to me privately and said, holy crap, look at this. This was amazing and full self-driving may well have saved my life, thank goodness, and my daughters. So, you know, that's, that's a huge thing. So he was just doing it for that. He wasn't trying to gain any notoriety and I really, really thank him for sharing this. But the big reason to share this here again is not that it is a statistic, but that it's an individual incident, but it shows just how fast the car is and how it's always paying attention, right? You know, as a perfect driver, if you're always swiveling your two little uh, cameras around and your neural net is working, then probably what you should do is you should, you know, at the light changes, you should start out and you should swivel your head back and forth and be looking at everything else. But, you know, we human beings tend not to be able to do that. And maybe he was in a conversation, you know, we get distracted, things happen. But the difference is that this car is paying attention at 30 frames a second to what's going on and making control decisions every 10th of a second. So, you know, 10 Hertz, it's making control decisions and it was able to slightly alter its trajectory and then obviously stop in a very significant manner as the car rocked up and down from the violence of the braking maneuver. So it was able to avoid the accident. Obviously, full self-driving, you know, if you rear end the car while it's sitting still, you're going to get in an accident. But it's just amazing to see that full self-driving is taking active measures to make sure that it's not getting in an accident when it can avoid it. And that is really incredible. And I think it's important for the world to see something like this, to go against a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's put out in the press all the time about this. You know, every single time somebody tragically dies in a Tesla, it's always full self-driving's fault, even though almost never is it full self-driving's fault. It's always the person was doing something stupid in the car, and that's what caused the tragic event to happen. It, years and years ago, yes, there were a couple of incidents about this, and it Again, I'm not downplaying the tragedy of this, this is terrible, but you have to remember we're playing a game of statistics here. If full self-driving can avoid more accidents than human beings can avoid, it's a better idea to let full self-driving drive the car most of the time. And so even though this was only an individual instance, it illustrates exactly how beneficial full self-driving can be. And it's not only for Michael and his daughter, but also the person driving the other car because you know, more than likely they were just not paying attention and just blew through the red light. I don't have any way of determining what was going on. I doubt it was malicious. I think the person was just, you know, probably not paying attention and was like, holy crap, what just happened? You know, just blew right through the light. So anyway, it helped their life out too because they could have been injured, they could have been killed, or at the very least, they would have been to blame for a very terrible accident, and that would have been a bad thing for them. And, you know, they would have had a really, really bad day. And the bad day was avoided for everyone in this situation by Tesla full self-driving. And that's amazing. And that's a big thank you to Ashok and Andre Karpathy and Elon Musk and everybody at Tesla's AI division. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it fun and intriguing. And I hope that the video quality is a little bit better in this particular setup. Again, let me know if you think so. Please do like the video if you enjoyed it so other people can find it and of course consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. As always a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon and amazingly enough I just announced about the tier levels in Patreon and a bunch of people have adjusted and some new people have signed up so thank you all to that very very much. If you want to check out all the information check the link in the description. You can be a kilowatt supporter, a megawatt supporter, a gigawatt supporter, or a terawatt supporter. 
And if you're interested in some awesome merch, check out the link in the description. We've got the TeslaBot t-shirt, which is super popular these days. Don't mess with Tesla. Lots of other t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description and help the channel out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $2,300. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you look in the description, you can see how clicking on a link and going shopping for a solar roof, a power wall, or anything from Amazon helps out the channel. Till next time, bye-bye.